Good morning. This is Terry Lee from Sweet Pea Papers, and today we're going to do a bit of an experiment. I've never done one of these before. I grabbed some papers. Um, this is an 8x8 eight by, eight, um, by Cartabella, and um, a whole pad. See, I've got a whole bunch, and it may even be two from two different things, but they're both farm related. So um, one's farm to table, and then the other one I think is something else farm. <laughs> anyway, not something I would normally use. Um, and I'm gonna make this as a standalone, but um, the, the person that I saw do one like this uh, made it to be um, glued in. So we're not gonna cover the back, but if you wanna keep it as a standalone, then you're gonna cover the back. So I hadn't really planned on that, so I guess I could think about it because I guess we could do it. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you real quick is a friend of mine makes these cute little uh, little baskets. They almost look like little french fry um, cart cards, you know, those little containers. And um, oh, my paper cut's looking bad. Um, actually, it's not a paper cut. I cut myself on the um, straight edge and that's why I'm not allowed next to sharps as we all know uh, but anyway you print it on double-sided paper this is my template so that's why it's on cream colored paper um, I didn't have any white right at hand so all you do is you take a piece of paper and it has to be square you know four by four five by five I think this is an eight by eight six by six eight by eight eight by eight and then you fold it this way, point to point, so you have a triangle, okay? Then you, you fold this down to where the point comes just above the bottom. And then you lift it back up, and the crease that is made by that is what you go by. You fold this side in to where it goes straight across, even with this maybe just a smidge below so you can close this down easily. You do the same from the other side. Okay, now this isn't very even because it's my template. It was the first time I tried it. And then you fold this back down and you attach it. Now, if you wanted to use it, now, and then she puts like um, hot cocoa and a little spoon and some little marshmallows or whatever in there and um, she uh, sells them as uh, fav you know gifts and uh, party favors and stuff and they look gorgeous because you know she's got the fancy paper and little uh, uh, what do you call those the chips that go with the kits and stuff you know the not ephemera because it's not flat but the little uh, card stuff okay I'm just gonna quit trying to describe it I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about by now Okay, and so she puts one of those there. They're very, very cute. And then she puts a decoration up here. Um, these ones she made for fall, and they had a little fall fox on them, and they were just the cutest things ever. Anyway, and if you're going to use it in your junk journal, just put a Velcro dot right there. Then you can still open this up, and you have a pocket here and a pocket here. And then you can open it up and put something here like a pocket across here okay so it's just a thought something that's used for uh, something different and then you can make it into something that you could uh, glue into your junk journal okay so there's that idea which I really like and that's why I saved the template let me put it in the template drawer oh I'm very sniffly this morning I apologize so I've got scattered straw I'm going to try to remember to use it. I may not. I may not ink because of the type of paper that it is. So what we've got here is a paper bag. All right. All I've done, and all I may do if this doesn't work out, is fold the paper bag so that it goes behind the fold when you, you know, when it's folded flat, this part. Okay, 
So it's going to be like a matchbook when you make one a matchbook. And so you're going to have these surfaces to cover if, after we get done kind of myrtleizing it. Um, you're going to have one and two. You're going to have your front this way and your front here. Then you're going to have three, four, and then you're not going to have to cover this. It's going to be the inside of a pocket. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to, all we're going to do with this is we're going to figure out a way to glue this shut so that we have a pocket here and then we're going to take a velcro dot to seal it shut that way when you flip it down everything doesn't come out oh very sniffly i'm going to put you on pause and go uh, take care of these sniffles okay i think i have the sniffles handled if not i brought tissue in here with me and i can put you on a quick pause and uh take care of the sniffles all right let's just not be so delicate and blow my nose <laughs> and then come back okay so what we're going to do is we're going to figure out a way to glue this shut in here so let's take a look and see what we've got inside of a paper bag we've got let me make sure i'm under the camera okay inside of the paper bag we've got these two sides where the sides fold in and then we have the area that we want to glue shut so what would happen if we open the paper bag and glue the bottom shut down in there I don't know what would happen okay so the problem is as you can see is that we still have the areas with the little flaps. Um, maybe I need to open it further. Let's see. No, because I only want to glue it together right here. So I could put glue on either side. Oh, but then when I fold it back, then this glue, I'm going to need to glue the sides as well. All right, let's give it a whirl. It's just a paper bag. I have a spare. I only have two. So let's try to get it right. Okay, so I'm going to put glue on the inside where this crease is on both sides. This is my plan. It's my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay, let's see if we can get the glue to come out. Okay, I'm going to put the glue whoops, across where that goes. And I'm going to put it up the sides on either side to glue those little flaps shut. When it, when I fold it up. Okay, this is a little more difficult than you would think it would be. Probably because you, you're holding the glue bottle in one hand. Okay, let's close this back up and then close this back up and see if everything glues shut so that we have a pocket. It's a little crinkly. Not bad though. All right, let's let it set up for a second. And then we'll see if anything will fall through down into here because we don't want that. And then we'll have little tuck spots here, you see all the way across. Now we can take a straight edge and open that up and have a, a pocket all the way in. However, the thing I'm worried about is that it's going to be kind of ooky because I'm not very good at cutting. I guess I should get over that. It's on the inside. Okay, let's see how this worked. Look, now we have a pocket. Oh, that worked just great. That was much easier than I thought. Well, I mean, it was ho hard holding the glue bottle, but gluing it shut was much easier than I thought it was going to be. Okay. Now we're not going to try to cover in here. It's a paper bag. You know what I mean? When you go open it to put stuff in there, it's going to be a paper bag. That's, that's just all there is to it. Okay. So we've got that glued shut 
Now we have to decide if we're going to open one side to make a pocket. You know, if we don't, that's going to be a lot of wasted space. If we do, though, we should have glued this shut first on the inside. Do you know what I mean? We should have reached down inside and glued this shut before we glued this shut. So that way our pocket would be here. Now if we cut it open, we could try to stick our glue bottle in here and glue this shut. I think that's going to be a nightmare. So if I leave them as tuck spots, they're still fairly deep. And what we can do is we can glue them shut here. We can glue them shut here. Like that to make it tighter and so that um, stuff doesn't fall out. So let's take and we're going to glue right here. This is my experiment. This is how I do when I'm not on camera. Okay, so let's try that. Let's glue that shut there. Now you don't want to glue it on the front, obviously, because then you don't have a matchbook. So you just want to glue this inside. Let's do it on the other side. Maybe I should have done both at the same time. So now let's glue this one shut. And then we'll have two tuck spots. Well, actually two pockets. You could put two tags in there. You could put two writing cards in there and they could stick out a little bit. That way you'd know they were there. Okay, now let's see how that worked. So this is gonna be folded down like this. We've got our pocket up here. Look at that. And now we have our two pockets on the side because we glued this shut. We didn't have to glue it all the way across on the inside. All we had to do was glue it in as far as this opens down here. Now, had we done that before we glued this shut, it would have been much easier. Okay. Afterthoughts. That's what happens when you're experimenting. Then you figure things out afterwards that you could have done easier. All right, so I've got these papers. I think they're pretty cute, but you have to remember that this is gonna be with this, right? So you're gonna kinda try to match it up a little bit. But when you open it, you're still gonna have this paper here. So you have to think about what you're gonna put here and here. So what I decided to do is I decided to leave this brown, like the paper bag, but I'm going to put a pocket across here. All right, it isn't going to be very thick. It'll be enough for a writing card because when you open it, you'll be able to pull stuff in and out, but it can't be any taller than the fold. All right, does that make sense? And then we'll put paper up here. Now you can put pocket up here too, but the thing is, is when you close it, there's a chance if you don't make it a, a tight pocket as in no gussets, um, that it could come out. However, um, and you ha can't make it any taller than this because then when it closes, you know what I mean? Then you're going to have troubles right here in River City. <laughs> that starts with T and that rhymes with P and that stands for pool. Okay, now we all know how old I am and no, I'm not going to start singing 76 trombones. I'm just saying, don't worry. Okay, so now I think what we should do I've numbered this number one because I think we should decide what's going to go here first since it has to match here and it has to match here on the inside as well. Now it's okay to put patterns next to each other. Um, I could have put a pattern paper in here, but um, I'm going to wait and see what it looks like. I think I'm going to like the paper bag part better with a patterned pocket, something that matches this, but doesn't have to be next right next to that. 
All right, so let's figure out what we need for right here. And I had picked out this right here. Isn't that cute? Okay, so that's what we're gonna put here. Once we make sure our glue hasn't lost its mind because they didn't put the pin in it. Put a pin in it. Okay, so now look at all the papers I have. I believe this must be two pads together because that looks more like 24 than 12. But I don't remember. Farm Life, maybe, it's the other one. Something like that. And they may not both be the same brand. I just honestly don't remember. I pulled all the papers out and have put them in a folder because they were all farm stuff, farm and farmy, farmy kind of kitchen stuff. So, um, let's see. So I decided, yeah, that I was gonna put this down. And these are the other papers I have picked out. So let's take our brand new pencil. Let's get a little bit more lead. Oh, I love this. Yeah, the other one I got is defective. When you push on this, the um, eraser goes in even when this is turned. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that, but that's what. Um, it's also green, like the other one I originally had, like this on my desk. And so I wanna be consistent, even though they didn't make a red one like this. There we go, Saga of the Pencils. So now we're gonna match this up. Now you're gonna have, you can't glue this shut. So you're gonna to wanna to measure from the edge here and not from what you see here. There's gonna be a little bit of a paper bag showing. All right, and I think, I think what I'll do is I don't think I'm gonna ink it. Hmm. I got out tattered straw or scattered straw. Say that ten times fast. Scattered straw, scattered straw, scattered straw. Yeah. Um you know what? Let's try it on a piece. We have plenty. Let's try it and see what it looks like. We can always trim just a little bit off of this. Now it's, this is a new pad, so that's why I'm kind of going to town on it here. Try to get some ink in there. Oh, you know, I do kind of actually like this. All right, let's go for it. Let's uh, cut it first. Duh. Okay. So let's go. And this is one-sided paper, so I didn't have to decide. Oh, right through our coffee pot. And remember, these are crooked as well. You see it sticks out on this side. That's why we can see it on that side. Okay. And you know what? I think I'm going to leave a little bit of a border anyway. So let's do there. To there and then our height oh if we do that though if we leave a little border then the border is going to get really big at the bottom so we're going to have a small border anyway hmm if I go to here No, it's because the bottom of the bag is crooked. So I'm going to leave a little border just like I wanted to. I'm going to do what I want to do. Then I'm going to leave a little border down here. That's too much. Right through the toaster. Okay. And someone had asked me what paper trimmer I use. This is a Fiskars paper trimmer with the 12 inch, I mean six inch base. 
and it opens out into 12. Actually, it opens out into 15. So it's 15 this way, six of it being the base. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That must be why they call it the 12 inch because it'll hold a 12 by 12 piece of paper. Okay, so that's what I use. I really like it. It's only about $30. So it's very reasonable. All right, let's see if I can find my Mark coffee pot. And it has um, a wire down the middle so you can see right where you're going to cut. I really like that's the one thing that really sold me on it. Okay, we'll set that aside. You never know. Maybe we could make our inside pocket with it. Probably not. And I remember there being a toaster. There we go. That makes it a little easier, huh? Coffee pot and the toaster. Okay. So we'll set all this to the side. You can always reuse paper pad papers. You do not want to toss them, right? Okay. Let's see how that's going to look. I think it'll be cute. All right. Let's ink that puppy. because there is a um, white core to this, so we'll cover that up. You know what I mean? It's white all the way through, obviously. This way we won't see that bright white around the edge. Now that we've inked this, we have to remember to ink everything. Now, I'm just flying by the seat of my pants on this. Never done this before. What are we going to call this? You know, you could um, use a hidden paper clip and clip it on. It could be a floating paper bag pocket. Paper bag. Hmm. A paper bag. We could just call it a paper bag. <laughs> Guess what it is? It's a paper bag. Now, I'm going to go by this side, here, because this, it's hard to see, but this is the bag under there. So I want to go by this, and then that will give me the edge over here that I want. And then I've come down just a little bit from the top. I've come down just a little bit from the top and up a little bit from the bottom, and then we get that paper bag border, which I like. Okay, so now, um, if we want to, we can paper this, um, you know, across here, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna leave it paper bag. Okay, now let's do number three, which I think was this. Yes. So let's do number three and cover this. I'm going to make a little temporary pencil mark here where I want to measure to. All right. A little edge around the top. I almost forgot and put my pencil in my mouth. I do that when I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. All right, that's the fold. So I want to come up just a little bit from the fold. And I want to come in just a little bit from the edge. And it's probably not going to line up with this because the bottom of this paper bag is crooked. Just so you don't get upset with me and go, Terry. <laughs> you big dope. 
That doesn't line up at all. Okay, here's our width. Here's our height. I was going to say that didn't seem right, but it is. And now we've got these papers we can use in another project. I put them in my leftover paper pad or kit papers drawer so that I can use them for something else. Possibly a collage. <laughs> now this project, the leftover pieces are good, good pieces to use. They're not going to have a bunch of little bitty pieces left over. So there's no little bitty collage. <laughs> wouldn't that be funny? A little 3 by 5 card collage. That would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? I've made a collage that was a bookmark. You might want to think about that sometime, about making one of those. I don't think I can reach it from here. Let me try and see, because I can see it from here. Oh, look at that. Okay, so on this side it's this. And then on this side it's a collage. And that's my big bookmark. Just a thought. So you definitely could collage on a 3x5 or a 4x6 card. Alright, now this pattern is directional. So let's make sure we put it on in the right direction. Because you know it's good to be efficient that way. But you see, these are almost kind of like the things together because there's the little beater, there's the mixing or the um, measuring cup pouring the ingredients in, and then there's our um, rolling pin and such. And then here's more kitchen appliances and tools down here. So I think that goes well together, even though they're two different patterned papers. this on. Remember, paper bags are crooked. They're made in a factory. A million a day, probably. And sold to you in your convenient supermarket location in packages of 50. Sorry about that slurp having difficulty speaking. I know you find that hard to believe. Difficulty speaking. Okay, now let's flip this over. Remember, this is going to be glued, or if not, then you need to put some sort of paper here. Okay, if you're going to make it a floating paper bag. So then we're going to do this area here. I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to crease it so that it wants to fold better. Okay. So let's paper this. And I decided I was going to paper this with this. Not really sure what I was thinking. Don't think I really like that. That's a little bit better. This big area, we're going to have to put side tucks or something. Let me put you on hold for just one second. Okay, we're back. I try to make my video segments 30 minutes. And then if I need to, I can cut them up. 
So you may get cut up. You don't know. Okay, so I don't know. I don't think there's an, I don't think I want to put another. Oh, you know what we could do? We could put the recipes here. Look, and it would cut off right there at the meatloaf. Oh, I think that's what I want to do. on here straight well as straight as we can on the crooked paper bag so that was where I had it only just a little bit lower down okay oh we're gonna cut off hamburger pie I don't know what to tell you should we have done it up here I think so let's redo our marks well, the width is going to stay the same. No, we better move it. We'll make the mark up here at the top. Okay, let's do this. Better, much better. I don't know what I was thinking. We're going to not have the golden meatloaf. No golden meatloaf for us. That's too bad. I love meatloaf. Oh, look at that. Oh, let me see here. I got it crooked. We might could cut it right at the cow. Yep, right at the edge of the cow. Let's do that. Let's do that first. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and do that first. saved the cow. If we had to, we could have trimmed just a little hair off of there if we had needed to. Okay, now let's calculate our height. If I remember correctly, it's partially into the... Well, it's not even that long. Oh yeah, it is. Okay. So we're going to go this far down. Much cuter. Much, much, much cuter. I don't know what I was thinking before. Okay, so let's see. Is that going to change what we do? You know, we could possibly use the rest of that recipe, the recipes here, as our pocket on the inside. I think that would be cute. We'll see. We'll have to take a look at it. Let's try to use up our scraps all in one project. How cute is that? Now there are cards and stuff that come with these, of course. It's a little easier to decide on your one-sided papers. Don't forget to put it on right side up, which is actually one upside down. It looks like this gets narrower at the bottom, which is the top. 
So we're going to be a little close to the edges at the bottom. That's just the way it's going to have to be because the bag is crooked. Very cute. I can live with that. And then remember, this is going to get tucked inside here. And so they're right next to each other. But look at the color match, of course, because they come in the same kit, but still. Okay. And then we have our side pockets. Okay. Oops. We have our side pockets here. What did I do with them? We have our side pockets here. So when it's closed, oh, I know I was getting thrown off by the top of this. Okay, so we have our side pockets here. Now all we need to do is put a pocket here. Let's get our recipes or, or should we make that the recipes the card? Should we make the pocket the same as the top? No, definitely not. Definitely not the same as the bottom. But I like the idea of the words not being sideways. So I think I'll make this into our card. So maybe, oh, this is too busy, maybe we'll make this into our pocket. Unfortunately, we're going to cut into this little cute little square here. So we're going to go from here. How high do we want our pocket to be? Not very big. Let's let's go to that line. And over here. Oh, look, we can go to this line. Oh, that's a little far in. Let's go just the other side of that line. Hmm. Yeah, let's do this way f first. Well, actually, if we do it this way first, we have this long piece. And we cut this off when we have a square piece. But if we cut the bottom off first, then we have this big piece here. off here yeah now we got that big piece I like that idea better so now the only kind of quote-unquote waste we have is this little thing here. And we have to ink it. Now, when we, when we make our card, we have to decide, do we want the golden meatloaf recipe or do we want the Norwegian meatball recipe? Decisions, decisions. It's not tall enough to make two cards out of the recipes. That would be cute, you know, a recipe on each one. don't like this color ink on this as well but 
you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, see, I like that. I, I like leaving the paper bag there. Our card is going to cover it. And then when you take it out, you, you the, the paper bag is there. It's not so busy that your eyeballs are going to fall out. <laughs> I think this, now that I look at this, it may not have been bad. I might have overthought it because when I see the pocket here I'm not sure that that would not have been a bad paper to put on there and then we could have the pocket of the same paper hmm I think I'm going to cover it changed my mind. I've made an executive decision, people. So now I'm going to line it up with here so that it'll look more consistent. Then I'm going to go down to here. Which is a little short, but it's got that fold there. And then our width is right here. Keep our pocket, keep our card. Let's do the same thing here. We'll keep leaving square or rectangles bigger ones if we can. And we'll have to look at the um, pocket. Yeah, see the lines line up. If we hadn't inked it, we could have made a hidden pocket. Hindsight. That's what happens when you just start making something without super planning, which is fine with me. And it's supposed to be kind of rustic. You know, I mean, it isn't supposed to be perfect. Um, gosh, I wish I could remember who I saw do this. And you guys may have seen her do it. She's very, very popular. But I can't think of her name. It might have been G. Kerr. It may have been. Or the other Kerr. I, I'm not sure if they're related or not. Sisters, maybe. I guess it could be mother daughter. They both sound fairly young, so I don't know, and I can't remember the other one's name. I'm having trouble with my memory this morning. I'm having trouble with my sinuses and my memory. They're both in your head. It's all in my head. So I'm wondering if it's just a um, brain freeze. <laughs> Let's slide that over just a little bit. Okay. And we'll put our pocket on. Remember, we only want to glue it on three sides. And with this being the plaid, it, it isn't really directional, so we can do it whichever way we want. We just want to line it up. Is it Angela? I don't know. I know G is one of them. Yeah, see these lines didn't line up at all.
it looks like because we cut the paper after we cut the pocket that I ended up with a little extra here but I've already glued it you know what I mean and so I'm a little bit country and someone else is a little bit rock and roll somebody else will rock it <laughs> let's make our card um This recipe's bigger. We could use a card about this size. So we're going to sacrifice our Norwegian meatballs in favor of the meatloaf. Yay! That's what I say. I absolutely adore meatloaf. I don't know about you guys. So let's see if this is going to work. Oh, we didn't do the width. So we need to bring this in. Um, because we've glued it. So we're going to look at this second line. And then we'll look at the second line in from here, see what that looks like as far as the glue. That should be all right. We'll just cut right where this little bit of a line is, where the edge of the recipe would be. We're not gluing that, but we are inking this. We have to ink it on both sides. Now, I'm not going to make the cards to go in the little side thing. You just saw me make a card. You cut a rectangle and you ink it. So, there you go. And there it is. If you're using two-sided paper, it might even be more fun. I could have cut down this paper and printed on the back. I could have run it through my printer and printed on the back something from a kit paper. But I'm not sure if that's legal or not. And we have funny laws and rules. So let's err on the side of, or err, I call it err, on the side of caution and not ink, um, not print, cut something up, scan it, and print this in. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that would be a copyright infringement. Why can I not get this corner? There we go. I'm having a bit of an issue with the corners. We're almost done. I can't get the corners to ink. There we go. Okay. So here's our card, hopefully. Well, how did it, Oh, I didn't cut it off. I was so excited. Guess who has to ink the corners again? Yeah, I'm not going to mess with it. I'll go back and fix it if I need to. Okay, now let's try our meatloaf recipe. Look at that. We have our golden meatloaf. And then we can fold this down and put this inside here, just like that. And we're done. You have your side pockets. Okay. Which are behind the tuck. They're back here, with your side pockets. I would, the card I put in, I would have it stick out a little bit because otherwise you're never going to find those pockets and you're never going to know they're there. You know what I mean? So, uh, 
this says main dishes and it says beef pork poultry and you got a couple of recipes you've got your kitchen appliances and then when you open it up you have someone preparing a meal you have the recipe for the meal and then you you don't have to open that at all so I think that turned out cute we've got it all done and um, there's nothing else to do on here so uh, I'm going to say goodbye for now and I will see you in the next tutorial and that's going to be just a second for you and a day for me. Bye bye.